What's going on guys? Welcome to the Fantasy Addiction Network. Today we are breaking down the week one matchup between the Tampa Bay Vipers and the New York Guardians. We're going to be getting into all of the relevant fantasy start and sits in this one and breaking down how we expect this game to go. But if you guys are looking for XFL content posted daily, hit that like and subscribe button so that way you can be notified every time we drop more news and content. Anyway, not going to waste any more time. Let's get started right away. All right, guys, so as I said, we are breaking down the Vipers and Guardians this week. This is the first game that is going to take place on Sunday, again, I believe at 2 p.m. Eastern time. So this will be the second day of the kickoff season for the XFL. And this is definitely uh, looking to be the closest and most competitive matchup this week. Right now, the Vegas line has dipped all the way down to Vipers minus two. They still favor the away team by two points, but that's almost a pick em at this point. So it definitely like this to be a more competitive game overall I think the Guardians will end up winning this one so uh, I'm against Vegas on this one particularly but I do think that it will be a close game all right let's break down we'll start with the home team and look at the Guardians no quarterback controversy here Matt McGloin has been the starter all along and is going to end up being a good option should be a high mid-tier guy uh, in this game that should be pretty competitive against Tampa Bay all right, looking at the running back depth chart, uh, there's there's another team with not really any running back surprises. Tim Cook gets the start, and behind him is Darius Victor, as we kind of expected. These guys both have a similar skill set and will look to eat into each other's workload, so I'd really avoid starting either until we see how that workload split is going to go and shake up. But overall, I would start Cook over Victor if I had to, and I still really like Justin Stockton a lot as the pass catcher in this game. Uh, Team, or for this team just because neither Tim Cook or Darius Victor give you a lot in the way of pass catching ability but I'm going to pump the brakes on all the running backs in this game until we know more about how this will shake out if I absolutely had to start a running back this week I would probably start Tim Cook but I'm looking elsewhere if I possibly can all right, looking over at the receivers. Now, this was the only team that actually officially listed their X, their Z, and their slot receiver on paper without us just having to try to interpret what they meant. Uh, they have Mikael McKay obviously listed as their primary X, but surprisingly, they have Taylor Redding listed as the second X receiver rather than the outside Z. Um, and then they have uh, Austin Duke listed uh, out as the opposite Z, but I'm not convinced that Taylor Redding won't still see a ton of snaps. He's been tremendously consistent throughout training camp, has been receiving a lot of praise, and I just think that they'll probably end up deploying him a little bit later in the game. I'm not starting Austin Duke. I'd still be comfortable starting Taylor Redding. And then in the slot, we have Colby Pearson, who should make a nice start at, in, in the slot. And I think overall, I'd still be excited to play Mikhail McKay, Colby Pearson, and Taylor Redding. I just think Colby Pearson probably jumped up over Taylor Redding slightly just based on the way that they had these guys listed out. All right, looking over at the tight end, we have another grand cluster of junk. We were expecting EJ Bibbs to be the primary pass catching tight end, and now he's listed as the tight end three behind Jake Powell and Jake Sutherland. Now Sutherland will likely be the primary blocker here, so I'm not too worried about him, but at this point, I would probably start Jake Powell over Bibbs until we see how this shakes out. But and you probably can't really choose if you're playing in a league that has a tight end, but if you're able to pivot off of all of these guys, then definitely wait and see how this shakes out. All right, looking at the defense, the Guardians definitely face a tough test in week one against the Vipers. At home uh, with Mark Tressman there, you know, being an offensive mind, uh, but I do think they can beat the odds and come out victorious. I like the Guardians this week to still be a good defensive performer for fantasy. All right, let's jump over to the away team. We'll look at the Vipers. Now, Aaron Murray is going to have the official start, but I do expect both Taylor Cornelius and Quentin Flowers to throw at some point in this game, making Murray a less than desirable fantasy asset. So try to pivot if you can. Now, looking at the running backs, no surprises here. Devion Smith gets the start, and the team will be the team's main power back. And Jacques Patrick should get some third down and passing game work, but I'm not starting him until I see the usage splits between Smith and Patrick. Now, if you play in a league that has Quentin Flowers as a running back, you almost have to start him just based on how versatile he will be. We know that Mark Trestman loves to throw to the running back, and while Flowers is listed as a quarterback, we know he's going to be used all over the field similarly to how the Saints use Taysom Hill, or even really just like 
how we saw Tim Tebow use back in the day. The only concern for Flowers right now is volume. If he doesn't get to see the uh, the ball a lot, doesn't get to touch the ball a lot, he's not going to put up enough fantasy value. But considering how versatile he is and how competitive I'm expecting this game to be, I would expect and anticipate Flowers to be used a lot. I would still start Devion Smith over Flowers this week until we have a little bit more clarity over how they're going to use Flowers, but I'd start both if I could. All right, looking at the receivers, tons of surprises here as well. It seems to be the uh, main thing that's going on in the league right now is just surprises across the board at the receiver depth chart. I'm really not sure what's happening with this depth chart. We got news today that Stacey Coley was just outright waived. Sean Tatis Jones is listed behind Dan Williams in the slot in the slot role. I don't buy this at all, but I mean, it is what it is. And then Jalen Tolliver and Reese Horn are listed as the outside guys. I'd really rather not start anyone uh, in the wide receiver spot just because of how ambiguous this all is. I still think at the end of the day, Sean Tavis Jones is the best receiver that they have and will end up being the number one receiver on this team. But for this week, if you can pivot off of all of these guys and just avoid this mess until we can figure it out, I would definitely do that. Now, sensing a pattern here, like the running game trying to avoid the receivers you definitely have to start Nick Truesdale no surprises here of course he's the number one tight end in fantasy and is the number one tight end on this team so definitely start Nick Truesdale and you could even consider him a flex option if you really want to make sure you have a pass catcher for the Vipers Nick Truesdale is probably the guy to own this week and then on the defensive side, I'd really try to avoid the Vipers defense on the road against a formidable foe in New York this week. So definitely look to pivot off of Tampa Bay if you can. But overall, I think that pretty much breaks down everything that we're expecting this week. I think New York can barely edge this one out. Should be a competitive game, but I just like New York slightly better than Tampa Bay. I think they have a really good offense, and their defense is what wins them the game in the end. But anyway, if you guys are looking for rankings, trade advice, waiver wire advice, all the things that you need to function in a season-long format, make sure you check out the link in the description and go to fantasyaddictionnetwork.com. You can access that for free. Again, if you guys are looking for fantasy and XFL, content posted daily click that like and subscribe button as we'll be posting stuff throughout the xfl season but thank you guys again so much for watching and i will see you in the next video